Hey everybody, this is Birch. Uh, I got a couple emails asking, uh, what's going on with Frank Miller? Uh, why is he in Rorschach? And uh, why does Tom King hate him? Well, um, I, the issue we're talking about here is Rorschach number seven. I tried to do a review of this and I'll, I'll just be honest. I, I, I would rather review uh, Iron Man <laughs> 2020. Um, it's, it's, it's probably, it's, it's better crafted, I would say, than that Iron Man book, but it's not fun to read. I, I, it's, I, it's, it, the funny thing is it's, I think this is really appealing to people who are kind of tangential periphery, uh, peripheral, uh, comic book people who are not quite in the business. Maybe they work for a comic news site or something like that. Maybe they're a YouTuber. Um, they don't actually make comics or maybe they haven't made many comics, never really broke into it big. And they're really interested in like the dirt and the gossip. It's like, what do you, what do you check first? You know, when you wake up in the morning, do you look at the weather? Do you get a cup of coffee? Do you scan Facebook message groups or do you look at your DMs to see what kind of gossip is happening? Um, I think the, the people who this comic are written for are people who have, uh, you know, like to get around and gossip at uh, comic cons, uh, as opposed to say talking about business or enjoying themselves or drinking or doing, you know, other things. Um, you know, no shade. Everybody's got their own uh, habits, but I've been in conversations. I've, I've, I've gone out with, I, I always go out with lots of different creators, lots of different people and, or retailers, whatever else. And sometimes I find myself in these, these conversations and they're terrible. They're, they're always like, Oh, did you know that, uh, Steve Ditko was actually, he hated women and was crazy. And here's a crazy Steve. And then they talk about that for like 45 minutes. And it's like, you know what? I I'm just not, I'm not in the mood for it. Um, I, I've sat around and people wanted to gossip about, uh, something, you know, Mags Visaggio is doing, uh, currently or something Scott Snyder is doing. Oh, did you know Scott Snyder said this and this, but people don't think we know. Uh, but, and he, he thinks he's plugged into this Facebook group, but he's not in this other Facebook group. And, you know, one day we're going to get him. And it's like, I've, I've, I've been in those conversations. I've, I've been around people who are having those kinds of chats. Uh, I'm in some of the groups. Uh, who, that are talking about, and it's just, it's boring. I, I've opted out. I've left a lot of uh, groups at this point, uh, both in person and in online, because it's just, it's boring talk. But to some people, they they live it. And that's what this this comic, uh, this Rorschach comic kind of reminds me of, because it's 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 very cute. There's a murder. There was, uh, the you know, the nature of Rorschach. Uh, Rorschach is, uh, you know, this is, you, you got to really kind of want to understand what's going on here. Um, and if you really buy into kind of the, the mad insane aspect of it, then maybe this is, this is good for you. But basically in this issue, um, we are, we reveal that at least a current Rorschach or a Rorschach is Frank Miller, that he was kind of turned into Rorschach somehow. Um, and then, uh, you know, that, uh, this, this, uh, Will Meyerson character who was a, fictional creator modeled after Steve Ditko was a previous Rorschach and he was hanging out with this, uh, this young girl called Laura Cummings and Laura Cummings, uh, has the, either the ability to turn people into Rorschachs or she kind of brainwash them, manipulates them or gets them, uh, who knows what, what is going on, but somehow she is like the common thread between different uh, Rorschachs. And, and so this comic is also pulling from a real world experience where uh, there was a seance tape and a bunch of, bluntly, a bunch of stuff that if you really love and you care about, you already know, and chances are you're not listening to this show anyway. And if you don't really understand it, my explaining is not going to help. It's just going to make you slightly irritable and confused. Uh, as to why this is going on. Um, the other part of the question though, and the, the one I'm getting a lot is why do people hate Frank Miller? What's, what's going on with Frank Miller? And this is a, a common one because comic uh, creators often seem to come and go out of fashion fairly rapidly. There was once upon a time that uh, Jeff Loeb was considered amazing and, and he did really great comics. And then, you know, then we, uh, it's like, did you know he did ultimatum? And in that, uh, the blob eats the wasp and not in a, not in a sexy way. Um, and it's, it's like, you know, he, he was a pariah and then he starts doing TV shows. And it's like, Hey, that Jeff Loeb guy's pretty cool. It, it just seems to be kind of, if you don't keep up, 
it seems kind of random. So Frank Miller, a guy who brought us Sin City 300, uh, work on Daredevil uh, for certainly, and then absolutely The Dark Knight Returns and Batman Year One, a bunch of really amazing comic books. Uh, I think you would be a fool to say that Frank Miller isn't one of the legends in the industry. He absolutely is. Um, he's, has he written some bad books? Sure. Now he's definitely put out some stuff I, I didn't care for. I thought the, the sequels to Dark Knight Returns were not very good. And, uh, I, the, uh, all-star Batman that he did with Jim Lee, uh, is, is crazy town on a number of different levels, but perhaps the most crazy is if you pick up the edition where you've got the original script, there is some, uh, to put it bluntly, batshit crazy stuff that Miller writes, like, Zoom in on Mickey's ass. We want a good picture of her ass. It's a good ass. The kind you like to eat. And it's like, whoa, what? why would you write that down? In the, like, I think Jim Lee's got it. You just write, you know, draw her looking pretty sexy. You, you, you don't need to, like, it feels like, it, it felt weird. I'm just, <laughs> just, it was weird. Um, it's, uh, I've, I've seen a number of scripts from a number of different writers that it's like, you, you're, you're putting way too much detail into this scene. It's always, it's, 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 slightly creepy pervy when it's uh, something sexy in nature and then it's super disturbing when it's something like we're gonna show the eyeball just come flying out it's gonna have like a little wormy vein behind it and there's gonna be blood just spraying and you're like whoa 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 the, the artist will take care of it you don't need to write you don't need to write all this down um but this is not why people dislike Frank Miller. Much, much of uh, why people uh, got into uh, anger at Frank Miller uh, came from kind of two moments that happened fairly simultaneously. Uh, the first was a uh, um, he wrote this book, uh, Holy Terror, which was uh, it was it was basically Batman taking on Al Qaeda is probably the best way to put it. Um, Frank Miller watched 9-11 go down, uh, you know, in the vicinity. And I think he it, it definitely seemed to uh, tilt him for a little bit. He, he had a lot of anger. He said he's had a lot of anger in his words. And he was, uh, you know, it was he was he, it, it tilted him. He's, he's talked about how he went. He was going through a dark time. But anyway, in this book, Holy Terror, um, there's a lot of what people have called uh, Islamophobia. Because basically the, the the hero murders the shit out of Al Qaeda and a bunch of other uh, you know Muslim uh, characters, uh, gory revenge on Muslims. Uh, people have called it. Uh, now you you can again you can like this book or hate it. It's a moment in time, but uh, it it was it, anyway. It, it got a lot of hate that I I think uh, tr it, it transcended just this is a bad book into like this is one of the biggest monsters of all time, uh, Frank Miller, and that that was. That's, that's a little ridiculous. Um, he also, and I think the two are related, um, he got very angry at Occupy Wall Street. Now, if, if we've, we've, we're, we're roughly 50 billion protests removed from Occupy Wall Street, but basically, um, you know, people showed up on Wall Street and they protested. And, um, you know, he, he said, uh, you know, basically he, he gave a statement saying the people who are protesting are louts, thieves, and rapists. Wake up, pond scum. America is at war against a ruthless enemy. Maybe between bouts of self-pity and all the other tasty tidbits of narcissism you've been served up in your sheltered, comfort little worlds, you've heard terms like Al-Qaeda and Islamicism. And uh, he, he was his, his point was basically you're here protesting Wall Street while we have an enemy uh, over, overseas. And he, um, he since has said he was very angry at the time. Um, he was, he was, uh, he felt anger kind of ripple out of him, uh, over that moment, that event. And if you're in the vicinity and you watch this go down, I, you know, it's, it's going to be traumatizing in a number of different ways. I, I can understand. Would I have watched that and then written Holy Terror? Probably not. But, uh, but regardless, you know, he, he was going through some anger. It's weird that we celebrate, you know, frankly, we're talking about Rorschach. We celebrate people like Tom King for working out their issues in their comics. While meanwhile, uh, Frank Miller is a, a monster. Uh, but anyway, he did those. And then from there, um, it, it seemed to just then, then the floodgates came open and suddenly, suddenly, uh, everybody's talking about, uh, you know, how Frank Miller, uh, hates women and all the women who are in his comics work in the second the sex industry or they're raped or murdered. And that's, that's not remotely true if you actually read the comics, but sure. Um, and that, uh, he's a, they've, they've called him a, a right winger and, uh, a homophobe and all, all the different phobes and 
uh, you know, terrible writer and he, he uh, you know, anti-trans for something he did with, um, uh, with uh, Dick Grayson in, uh, in Dark, Dark Knight Strikes Again. Um, you know, I, just, just, just a lot of, uh, you know, it just, basically everything was terrible. And, uh, you know, he loves Nazis and I just, just all the stuff came out for Frank Miller. And it, it, it was like that for a while. Things now seem to be turning around maybe a little bit. Uh, Frank Miller recently came out and they were saying, oh, I'll bet you love Trump. And I think he made the comment, uh, what do you say, uh, real, real men stay bald, I think. And then a bunch of the, the people who have been attacking him suddenly had a newfound love for, uh, for Frank Miller as it, as it happens. So, um, who knows? Um, you know, it, it's he's one of those people that uh, had contributed a great deal to the comics industry uh, through the certainly through the 80s, uh, through the 90s. He 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 was a, a legend. And I think regardless of whether you like his recent work or dislike his recent work, his work it doesn't you don't retroactively alter the past. So, you know, there's your short answer. People listening to this either like Frank Miller, hate Frank Miller. Uh, who knows? Uh, it's up. That's up to you. Um, if you dislike Frank Miller, you've got a lot of reasons, I guess, to do that. Uh, but I think it's it's unfair to erase him. And then to the issue at hand, um, Frank Miller depicted in Rorschach number seven. Um, I I would if if you asked me, you you asked me to bet on it. I'm willing to bet Frank Miller did not know this was coming. I, I'm I've. I've talked to at least a couple people who suspect the same, who would be in theory somewhat in the know that suggests that Frank Miller wasn't consulted by this. Again, I don't know. Um, I would think it would be a disaster if, you know, DC was printing a comic um, that had, you know, a character they certainly make a ton of money off of today and send royalty checks to today based off of his work. I think it would be pretty nightmarish if uh, he wasn't involved in some level. Um, so, the logical part of me says he has to have been, um, but the petty, uh, stupid people who don't, uh, you know, don't seem to respect things that happened in the past to make me suspect maybe, maybe not. Um, you know, in terms of, is this a good comic? Uh, well, you know, this wasn't a real review. That's up to you. Uh, if you like this kind of insider baseball stuff, um, you know, uh, good, good for you. It's uh, this is this is this is yours. Then there you have it. Um, it's not for me. So I'm you know, I'm just I, I to me, it's like you've got all these amazing characters. You've got amazing things uh, that you can talk about and write about and create and imagine. So, you know, kind of taking shots at a deceased Steve Didko and a Frank Miller, who's, um, you know, who's, who's not doing very much in the industry anymore, uh, whether intentionally or unintentionally meta or not, it just feels petty. Uh, and it, it feels like, you know, on some level people are out of ideas, but again, your mileage may vary. You go to those cons, you get into the right groups. People will happily regale you with hours and hours of amazing gossip. And it's, uh, it's a thing as they say, it's a thing. What do you think? Are you enjoying Rorschach? Do you like this turn? Do you like seeing Frank Miller represented here? Is this, is this a comic for you? Uh, are you a person who hates Frank Miller? And so you're, you're reading this like, yeah, finally, he's being portrayed like a lunatic nut. Uh, cool. Uh, Frank Miller has a nicer house than the one that's portrayed in Rorschach. I, I will, I will say that very definitively. Yeah. Like, and subscribe. And thanks for listening.